everyone. Yes, it's a chest freezer. Probably about seven to 10 cubic foot magic chef. I got this from my parents probably about three or four months ago. They haven't used it for over a year and they always left the lid open a little bit so it wouldn't stink. But the last time they used it, it worked perfectly fine. So we transferred it about 20 miles in the back of my dad's pickup truck and it sat down here for another two or three months until my in-laws decided to start throwing stuff into it and turn it on. Lo and behold, it doesn't work. The compressor kept on running, but it wouldn't get cold. So, what's the first thing you think? Well, it's out of Freon. Unfortunately, on these units, there's no, it's not like a car where you have a high side and a low side tap, and you can actually get into it. So, what you need to do, because this is going to be a real quick video, you need what's called a bullet piercing valve, just like this picture right here. And then you also need this little adapter that goes from the fine threads on the end of the bull piercing valve and switches it into the little clip-on connection that you would normally get, such as with a can of Freon for a car, R134A. It's a little clip-on style. It's basically called an R12 to R134A conversion fitting. They're like 7 or $8, if that. Um, I'll try to find links for them and leave them down below. And, of course, you will need a nice little refill kit for a car. Now, I suggest, since if you have the same problem I do and you lost Freon, spend the extra money and get the stuff with UV built into it. So this way, you can use a black light flashlight and hopefully the leak finds itself. So, let's go down to the compressor and I'll show you how it's connected in there. Now, of course, you can hear the compressor actually running right now because uh, I've already fixed this unit. But here is my bull piercing valve and my adapter, which I'll lift up the camera in a second to show you. Now, you only have two lines coming in and out from a compressor. You also have this little nub here, which doesn't go anywhere. And that's when they do factory filling. You're not going to touch that at all. You basically have a line coming out, which will go to those fins in the back, such as back here. So if you trace that line, it goes to these fins. That's not the line you want. You want the line that's over here that goes back into the compressor. You can see this one getting cold, but of course if your unit's not working, it won't be cold. This will be coming from the internal coils inside the freezer. So this is the one you want to tap. This is your low pressure side. Sorry for the shakiness here. But now you can see the bull piercing valve and the adapter from R12 to R134A. Now what you would do with this is once you have it pierced and it connected here, this has a Schrader valve just like on a car tire. So it's not going to leak out. You take your can and clip it on. And there we go. And of course right now it's not going to show any pressure because it's actually running and that's just the way chest freezers are. Now. The thing is, when I pierced it, there was no pressure in this line. So if you still have some pressure, um, you might have a different problem than Freon, or it might be low. In either case, you got to make sure you have the right amount of Freon in the unit. For me, it was easy. I had no pressure, so I looked at the back label of this unit, and it says right on the label that this unit is designed to use 3.5 ounces of R134A. So now that you're connected and you turn on your unit, my compressor was still running even with no pressure in it, but thankfully there was still oil in the bottom of the compressor. What you need to do, so this way you know you put three and a half ounces of Freon in the unit. Because if you put too little or too much, it won't work right, and you might end up screwing up the compressor in the process. It is real simple. Put the unit on a little scale and weigh it beginning when it starts tear the weight and then start adding and this way you'll be able to see when you hit three and a half ounces at which point you stop filling at least for mine is three and a half ounces it depends upon what your unit actually uh, requires now of course once you have the three and a half ounces or whatever your unit requires into it uh, the next thing is let it run for an hour make sure it actually gets cold inside if it does you may be fixed you may not be the other side of the coin is, where did that old Freon go? This is why we used Freon with UV in it. And just to show how the UV works, I had a previous one of these that was about three years old, and it spilled on me and went all over the place. So I have it on my scale right now. And you can see all the nice little green splatter down there. Yeah, 
that's the UV dye. So I've ran through here and I've gone through even my new fitting, all the old fittings, the outside coil on the back and even inside. I can't find my leak, but it's still running after three weeks. So here's what I did just to keep an eye on it, make sure it keeps running fine. Now, of course, here's my chest freezer. You got this little white line that's running up here. I spent an extra $12 on this little unit right here. Let's see if I can focus in on that. And this basically is a little thermometer that goes into the freezer itself, keeps your high and low, and also gives you an alarm. Like I have mine set to start alarming at 10 degrees Fahrenheit. If this unit starts going bad to let me know, hey, either it needs more Freon or something's really wrong, I want to protect my food. So this is like an early warning system for it. I think this costs like 10 or $12. I have to look again online on Amazon for it. I'll try to leave a link for that as well down below at the end of the video. But what I'm going to do now is close off the top of the bull piercing valve. So this way it's resealed. And now I can take off the adapter so this way I can put the plate back on. Now be careful when you're unscrewing it so you don't overflex this copper line. It is a soft copper so it could potentially break on you. Okay, so now it's off. Now just to make sure it's sealed, the bull piercing valve comes with this nice little cap that has a rubber o-ring inside of it. So, for safekeeping, in case we ever have to refill it again, it helps keep the Freon in there. There we go. I'm going to leave the Allen wrench right in here. Leave that right there, and I can put the cover back on. And now we got the cover back on. So now it's all tied up, it's all ready to go, and I still have the pieces if I ever need to top it off again. So... Before doing this, you really should have a basic understanding of HVAC before attempting this because you could potentially either waste money or even hurt the unit more than it actually is. For me, it was just an easy refill it and it's happy. So your mileage may vary and don't hold me responsible if you blow yourself up. So feel free to leave a comment down below if you think I'm an idiot. Thumbs up if you actually like this video and I'll see you next video.